Today I'm gonna show you guys how to tarp a roof. Hey, the Cox here, thanks for joining us in Around the Home. Yeah, we got some storm damage here all around me, you can see it. Storms came through uh, last weekend, um, had some uh, confirmed tornadoes nearby, uh, trees down like crazy. I'll probably have some tree videos here with my Ego equipment versus my gas equipment here coming up sorely. Um, if I do, I'll get a link, you know, up there at the top right of your screen for you. Um, but that being said, you know, if you wouldn't mind taking a moment and hit that subscribe button before I forget to tell you, um, that always really helps out a lot. Hit that bell for notifications so you notify when we make great new content. And also at the top right of your screen will be a link to our website. Hundreds of more videos organized really well. Okay, but let's get back to this right here. So we've got shingles loose and we're dealing right now, the homeowner's dealing with the insurance company and roofers, and it's probably gonna be a couple weeks before they get out here. We've got uh, freezing rain coming tomorrow morning. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of cold right now. Freezing rain coming tomorrow morning, that's gonna turn into uh, flooding rains in the later afternoon. So we need to get this tarped so we're not leaking into the into the attic, through the ceilings, you know, down, down below. So we don't want the ceiling damage, we don't want the mold and the insulation. So we wanna try to wrap this up and, and keep it functional until the roofers get here to replace it. So I'll show you what I got going on. Okay, so what I got here first for our uh, fasteners are these button cap nails. Let me get real close. Okay, you find this in the roofing department, normally used for like attaching the, uh, the felt paper or other things like that. So it's got a big plastic button on it. And then the, the nail itself is a ring shank nail. So it's not gonna go anywhere. And then I've got this huge box of four mil construction uh, plastics. Okay, so clear, clear plastic and it's really thick, four mil. To give you an idea what that is, your standard blue tarps are between four and five mils. Okay, so it's about the same thickness as that. If you use the really thick uh, construction builder's grade uh, trash bags, um, they're normally three mil. So this is actually a little bit thicker than that, okay? So some of you are all like, well, where's the tarp? I thought you said you're gonna tarp in the roof. A tarp's not 100% necessary. You can use the blue tarp, that's great. Um, but you're gonna get a little more bang for your buck by buying a big roll of this, okay? Um, and since it's gonna be ripped off by the roofers and thrown away, I'm you know, going for the bigger bang for the buck. And, and it's just as good, it really is. Now some people will say, we well, need boards to put along the edges and then roll the tarp and the boards and screw it down. That is one way of doing it, sure. I'm not saying that's a bad way. There's more than one way to skin a cat though. There's definitely wrong ways to do things. So I'll tell you a couple points of what you have, you have to do, okay? So you got all these damaged shingles right here, they're missing, and they go all the way down there, okay? So one of the big points of doing this is you wanna wrap, whether it's a tarp or the stick plastic, obviously it has to cover that, but you have to go over the peak on the other side. You can't just start like right here where my foot is, and then you just go down because water's gonna get behind it, okay? So you gotta take it all the way to the other side of the peak. You know, it doesn't have to go far over, but you gotta go a couple feet over there on the peak so the rainwater doesn't get underneath it. And then from side to side, you're gonna wanna go probably close to three feet over the edge so the water doesn't get tucked under. Okay, and either way you do this, whether you're gonna use boards or no boards, you wanna pull the plastic or the tarp tight and give it enough fastener so it stays tight so the wind doesn't just pick it up and the rain blast underneath it. So let's get this rolled out and get started. As you can see me, I'm rolling the plastic numerous times. That's so that it doesn't tear right out from the nails or screws, whatever you're using. And because I'm not using lumber to support it, I'm nailing like every other row of shingles here. So there's more than enough fasteners to hold it tight. Thank you. 
Okay, so when you're gonna nail in the bottom part of it, it doesn't matter which side of the peak it's on, you have to roll it underneath, okay? Like so. So that the water doesn't pull, okay? It's harder to roll it that way. That's why, you know, on, on the sides you can roll it on top, but right here the water's gonna pull if you don't. <laughs> Now, of course, don't forget to get any debris off the roof. You don't want any sticks poking through and puncturing your tarp or plastic. And that goes the same if you have any nails that are poking through. You don't want them to do the same thing. Now, of course, I would happen to have to do this right over the roofing vents, okay? We don't want the attic vents to get covered up and cease to function. So we're gonna slit it and run the plastic around them and the nail around all these vents. Um, and of course, be safe. Don't attempt this if you're not comfortable on the roof that you're trying to work on. You know, if you're not comfortable on it, hire somebody, seriously. You don't need to be in the hospital and still have to fix the roof on top of that. Guys, thanks so much again for watching my videos. Uh, please take a moment and share them on all your social medias. Uh, if you didn't before, take a moment to subscribe to the channel, check out my website, and additional videos there as well.